Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So, gosh, video five, I did not intend this to be five episodes, two, maybe three, but um, I was thinking about it this morning, thinking, gosh, I still feel like I've got more I can do. And I think a lot of it's come down to this piece had some embroidery already on it. So for those of you who just found me, Botanical Beauties is a flower per month that we are um, sketching, painting, stitching, embellishing. Um, this old tablecloth had a pre-printed doily imagey type scenario. You know, the old days when we were doing fancy work on our doilies. So the person that had this prior to me had put a little bit of thought into some colour schemes and these like little morsels of stitching already taking place. So I've come along and decided to add pansies, my first prompt to this old cloth. Look, it's even got stains, don't you just love it? It's had a life and now it's having another life. So let me bring you up to speed because um, this has been a labor of love. It's been very hard to put down. I've done the stitching over about a week that um, Christmas, New Year, house full of guests, um, when everyone sat down after a meal just to chat, I'd pick it up. So I've had a lot of time on it, thank goodness, because it really has, has just been glorious to pick it up here and there and stitch into it. So I guess I'll just bring you up to speed because if you're following this along and you're following my sort of style, I'm going to really, I guess, get the basics done and then I'm going to start, depending on time, layering into it and just explore stitch, explore texture and really, I guess, loosen up my style a little, like break a few rules, so to speak. So just to recap, it was a sketch it. The prompt was pansy, then come through with watercolours, inks, tents, pencils, some gouache paints, whatever you got, and have a play. There's no rules. Um, different products do different things. I love the fact that things have bled and there's movement. And I've since come back with a little watercolour set I had with me here. And I've slushed some more paint around. I felt like my flower needed a little bit more blue, so I watered down a bit of that and I put a bit of yellowy orange in around the back of these guys. So I'm sort of drifting between medium still, which is just so much fun. I look at a flower and go, gosh, I think I could pop a little bit more pink in there or liven it up a little bit more. And I've just started playing with beads, but let me just back it up a little bit and I'll take you through what I've been doing. So this particular piece had just the little flowers done, the odd one by the original lady. So that flower and that flower and those three. And I think these little brown ones here. So what I've done is sort of created an, a similar style so that they blended. But then I noticed that some of these, I could still see the print below this ink. So I thought, righto, let's loosen it up. Let's just keep adding. So I've, this morning, literally just run that dark purple around those guys, just to sort of disguise the fact that I could still see the print. Um, I did it a little bit in here. And then I started dropping a little bit of ink in it from the watercolors. The big flowers here, the center of them was printed like that. So lazy daisy stitch is what the manufacturer was suggesting. And I did that on this one. Then I outlined it with satin stitch. Then I got a pile of turquoise and went through and wrapped the satin stitch, which just sent me down a whole nother rabbit hole because then I started going back through and the satin stitch that I had done on the stems, I started wrapping them as well. So this is what I mean by every day I picked it up and just stitched something. I explored another flower or another stitch or I lay it on top of what I had already done. Earlier in the video series, I had back, split back stitch the outline of the flowers. 
and I had done that pretty much for those three and this guy just sat for uh, quite a few days. So then because I had started wrapping stitch like that stem, I then did the split back stitch. Then I came back through and couched over the edge. I've stitched a little bit. I've put some cast on stitch in the center, but I've left that paint because I think you'll probably recall I was pretty impressed with this little flower. I thought, oh, you're a, you're a cutie. So I, I do wanna see the journey that I've made within the piece. So I don't have to stitch over it all. Um, this one here, I started getting really abstract and I did that bottom petal and I just love it. And then I thought, well, if I do that there, there and there, it's gonna start looking quite heavy and probably overpowering. So I just backed away from it. I've since come back and put a couple cast on stitches in the center of those flowers. It probably could do with one more. Um, then I started looking at the print that's already on the piece and I started adding in more little twigs and then putting some little buds from another color in there just to soften you know, it all up. Then this morning I thought it's time to iron it, to get rid of my friction iron out pen, which had sketched it, take it away, see what I was left with. And I really missed seeing that pen. And I think I alluded to it in the previous video that I'd like to dig out my black fabric pens and add in a few sketchy lines. So I guess, I see, how do I describe this? It's like, and a few people looked at this piece over New Year and they really enjoyed seeing the journey I was on, the sketch, the paint, the stitch, the embellishment. And when I say embellishment, that's your fabric, your lace, your beads. I haven't even got to fabric and lace yet, but I've just sort of started tiptoeing in the beads and I, I really missed it. As soon as I ironed the piece, I lost those original lines. So I dug out some pens that I had purchased when I was doing line sketching. They're really fine point permanent pens. And I did myself a little sampler like I did with the paints, just to remind myself what they sort of look like. And I settled on number two so what I did is I just started doodling things back in and it might be just a little, a little stroke with a, a branch coming off of it. It's like, I guess, someone glancing at it going, oh, she, she considered stitching there, but she's changed her mind or that's how she thought it might play out, but then she's she's changed her mind. So I'm doing like little, little sketchy, I guess, I don't know, mark making is another name, I guess you could call it. So I started doing some little sketchy dots and some little, I don't know, little wiggly lines and just doodling. So if this is something you'd like to play with, I'd highly recommend it. Just get a very fine, pen and just lightly cruise over your piece. Now, because we've got a month, why not? Maybe once a week, pick it up and just add something else. I think you'll find you will start to get braver, like the leaves are all different. Another thing I stitched this morning, remember we had this turned edge on what I'd call an outlined leaf or a skeletal looking leaf. I went in and did just some stitches through that the turned bit of the leaf. And I really like that effect. It's just added something else. You can see all my black lines through there. Yeah, really, really fun. Um, see this mark here? I don't know. I must have thought there was a stem coming up to a flower. I'm not sure. I've, as I said, I ironed it. So it's, it's actually ink tents or paint or gouache, so it's there, it's staying. So everything's been set, the ink is all, you know, set. Watercolor will fade, but, you know, this is not gonna be a tablecloth to be used on a table. This is just a piece of cloth that I'm stitching into. There's no, 
you know, maybe one day it'll be framed, but I, I don't think so. So I'm not too worried about beads. I know a few were thinking that beads might make the surface unlevel for a cup to sit on on the table. That's not my concern. If you plan to use your tablecloth, of course, you will have that as a, um, a consideration. So what was I saying? I think that, oh yes, this mark. So I was watching some of the other YouTube um, presenters that are joining in on the fun and a few of them are naming their flower being a botanical beauty so to speak so I thought brilliant that's what's going to disguise that little boo-boo there so I got out my letters these were just on um, eBay I don't think they were Amazon but I have seen since them seen see, since seen them on Amazon so you can basically build up your word. Now, you do need to stamp it on a squishy surface like a book. I don't know. It's just something I picked up when I was making journals that the stamps perform the best when they're on a, a bit, of, got a bit of bounce, a bit of give, like a hard table. They just don't stamp as well. So just a little tip, hoping there's some decent ink left in this. Should be, about to find out. I did this for the Ann Brooks 52 tags. On the back of the tag, I just stamped on some fabric the prompt. And it's really good because I flip them over to go, well, what was I actually trying to convey? Hold it on for a moment or two. The Ann Brooks one, I used a brown and it gave that sepia soft tone. Um, this one I'm thinking I can handle jet black. So I pulled out jet black from the, from the, um, I'm just looking for a scrap of fabric to clean, clean my, where's, uh, have to be a scrap of fabric here. want to clean I don't have any paper if I was making journals I'd have paper for sure to clean the ink off so that's good you don't have to do this you might look at your piece and say well words just don't suit the style of it that's completely up to you but I saw some of the other girls doing it and I was like ah oh, Genius, That's, that'll cover my little smear of paint. I don't know how that even happened. I should go back and watch the earlier videos to see what my thought was there. Maybe I was bringing up a stem for another flower. I don't know. So there's my little... I want it to be just there. So I'm really going to get the frame back as close as I can. to the edge, trim a little bit off. So it's like a tiny little afterthought. I Actually, I really enjoyed my family who were around that whole, you know, I think I said Easter, it's not Easter yet, guys, don't panic. Around that New Year's that were dropping in and coming and going and I really enjoyed watching them explore my piece. And I think this cloth is going to be very much like that. It's gonna be, what have you done? There's too much to explain, just go for a look. That's the piece I'm trying to create here. So if that's you, go and pick it up again. You're thinking you're done. You'll find something you can stitch into. I could literally spend hours on this piece. So this video will be the last one for Pansy. So I just want to show you a couple things that I've done that might inspire you to go and pick yours up and put another layer of stitch over it. One is the words. So let me just invisible stitch down because I don't want it to stand out. So I'm not going to put a border around it. Oh, I lost my thread. So I'm not going to border it. I'm not going to outline it. 
I just want the furry little words just to appear somewhere in it because it's all about the flowers. You might want to add some black sketch back into your piece so you, oh, what's the thread again? Come on, it's like a false start, isn't it? It's because there's so much fabric draping over my hands that it catches the fine threads and I should concentrate and just stop talking. So, yeah, you might have ironed your piece and miss seeing the beginning of the process. Now I've got a knot. Are you serious? Oh, guys. Keep it cool, Corinne. One is getting a little frustrated, folks. That's all good. Trying to get out of my head everything I want to say to you. And meanwhile, the technical side of, you know, stitching is falling apart. Gosh, and I want to do a cast on stitch with you. What could possibly go wrong with that? Okay, I've got a better size knot. I've got hold of the thread, which I've just lost. It's getting caught on the crocheted edge. Remind me to tell you about the crocheted edge, for goodness sakes, I've got so much to tell you and I can't even get this. Hmm, okay, let's try it again. I know you lot are giggling out there. All right, all right, knot is through, knot is holding. You'd think I've never stitched. It's sort of a comical error, isn't it? All right, we're away. Can the girl continue talking now and everything will just work? Who knows? So invisible stitch just to hold this itty bitty hint of a word nestled within the flower. I sort of was thinking, you know, there might be a flower that is standalone out there. Seriously. And a big blotchy wordy thing might not suit it. So that's why I'm being cautious on my words. And look at the end of the day, if I change my mind down the track, I can always cut this little guy out because he's just stitched. Not cut it out, you know what I mean. Snip him and remove him and go bolder. But at the moment, this will be more than enough. That's a, a hint. Like someone's got a piece of sticky tape and just written the, quickly written the name of the flower they've just found and added it to a journal. So that's the look I'm going for. Gosh, I've enjoyed this, guys. And I've really enjoyed all of you guys out there that are more experienced with handling watercolours and intense pencils and, and just throwing in a few tips here and there. It's just been fantastic because it's like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Or given me a, another idea, I'm like, oh, yes, I remember when I used to do something like that. So then I'd go and refresh my memory on that technique. So always look through the comments on these YouTube videos. Well, not just mine, but because it's incredible the knowledge that is shared by people. It's very generous. We find that too in our Facebook group. It's just been really good. You just don't know who you're rubbing shoulders with sometimes and you're like, oh my gosh, I know that artist. They're in our group and it's just given us a snippet of information on watercolour preservation. Like, oh, it's very cool. All right. So where are we at? I've told you about the pens. If you have a set, dig them out. Do yourself a sampler. I'm going to leave that in there now. Just so that I know its reaction to fabric that's being added to my, my stash for this project. I've got my um, um, letters out and I'm using blackjack ink on this project um, 
got to be permanent. Make sure it's not a washable one. Now, beads. I don't know if I have to show you much with the beads, but what I did think about doing is popping some beads down the centre of some of these leaves. I've been dancing around the orange cluster flowers, but I had thought that this could handle a few scattered um, beads in amongst the uh, foliage because the foliage is so random. There's ink showing, there's stitch, there's weaving. So I really feel like we could do a few little beads. I've got a few real dark ones here so that I think they, they might be the wrong type of green. Yeah, they're too fresh, so they're no good. Put them back. They might have to be these more muted tones. All right, so we need a tray before it gets out of hand with beads. And it just did. Did you hear that? I just tipped a few out and 20 billion fell out. Oh, goodness me. It's all good. I'll use them. There's heaps of little spots where I could nestle a few beads in. So let's just have a look at this cluster of flowers here. There's a spine there where all the stitches have come in and I can see a little indent. I think I will pop a few beads in there. So I'm just going to do a couple little stitches first. But you can see how this piece has evolved. It's been really good. It's been a lovely project to have started you guys have just started it and i'm trying to stay at least a week or so in front of you all so that you get your daily videos i still haven't reinstated sunday yet i'm just going to see how the roxy project goes i might end up needing it just to get through the amount of work we've got on I'll just bring my needle back a bit. Nestle the third one there. And just once again, layering more embellishments. It's fun when you get to this stage. You think you're done and you've got all this fun stuff to do yet, like beading. I haven't pulled the ribbons out yet. I haven't felt I've needed it yet. So at the moment, I won't be using silk ribbon. I think I can create a lot, enough interest on my pieces without it. It's a really good way of testing stitches too. Now, if your pansies are sitting there and you're thinking, oh, gee, I like how there's like this thing happening under Corinne's, go for it. You've got time, you've got a month. If you get your feature flower for the month stitched and you want to start exploring some of your favourites, go for it. You can fill the gaps with other flowers. Like this is going to be absolutely gorgeous when it's finished. If you are doing a piece where you're just focusing on the one flower and you're, you know, in that zone of that pansy and featuring it, like Susanna is doing it in a vase or and sitting on a tablecloth surrounded by textiles, this might not suit. But if you're doing something a lot more looser, like mine, um, you might start connecting your feature flowers with other flowers. Go for it. I think that's great. And if you find that you've actually chosen a flower that you want to feature and we mention it, later in the year um, well there you go you've done your prompt and you can spend that month maybe doing another one of your favorite flowers or filling in space with other flowers like just I'm so pleased I had this print because it's 
given me a platform to launch from. And I can even see here, let me just show you something I've just noticed about this that it's only just happened now. And then I'll show you this edging. So the original creator, that's her flower. You see how she's done a stitch, wrapping it then the edge to give a little raised edge. She did the same in here as well. Well, look at this. She has been a creative soul. Look at that flower. So she's changed up the way she's done that little daisy. Then look at this one. Oh my goodness. So she has been literally changing up her stitch as she started this cloth and for whatever reason, never got it finished. And here I come along and go <laughs> and drop that on it. This piece was made for this. Gee, that's a bit of a fuzzy feeling I just got. Another thing I wanna show you is before I do this cast on stitch bud, and I think I left one up here to do, which I'm using to soften the image. I've got these little pieces left over all the time. This, this um, what do they call it, oughts. Random little pieces of thread, not much chop for anything because they're too small. But what I'm doing is I'm going to grab my orange I need for the bud. It's really bright and vibrant. I'm gonna get myself off a piece. And before I show you that cast on stitch, I'm gonna show you what I've been doing on the edge with my scraps. I don't know how it happened. It's just one day I picked up the fabric and I was like, oh, look at the scraps from last night. And they're all pieces about that long. And it's mainly because I've finished stitching where I wanted to stitch. And I've got this bit left that I really can't put it anywhere else because that's exactly what I wanted it for. And it just seemed like I was really getting some wastage. So those little bits I took to my border. And I'll show you what I've been doing. So the lady before me, gosh, I wish we had a name. Wouldn't that be fun? Like, you know, your great-great-grandmother. But I don't. Random stranger. Imagine if someone out there saw it and go, that's mine. Wouldn't that be cool? A reunion of sorts. Okay, focus girl. See this here? That edge where the manufacturer puts a dot, dotted line with a hole for a crocheter to crochet their edging on, of which then they start a decorative pattern. Those little holes have a bit of a, a black ink shadow. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's always there. You always see it on doilies. So what I thought I would do with my oughts, my scraps, is stitch tiny itty bitty stitches. Let me just get rid of my glasses because this is close up work. Let me zoom in. And just do tiny little stitches to use that thread. And you might get an inch of stitching. You might get three inches of stitching. Doesn't matter. It's just a spot on the perimeter of your piece to hold your oughts. I thought I was a genius when I figured this out, guys. Because it just seemed like I had such a pile. I think it's because I was doing a lot of stitching. And I was moving from chair to chair, depending on where people were sitting and chatting, say, after breakfast or lunch. And I kept picking up this little pile of thread. And it, was, it felt like it was a bit substantial to the point of I started to think, well, finally I'm getting a decent oughts jar going. And I thought, no, how can I use it? And this is what I come up with. So if you have an edge, you have an opportunity just to stitch some random colour. 
of your project around. And then all I did once I finished this little tiny little messy stitch to finish it off, I just slid my needle back through. Gosh, I hope I'm on camera. My chair seems really low. There were kids here in my craft room, so I'm wondering if someone sat on the chair and lowered it. I have a sneaking suspicion that that's the case. Alrighty, let's, I won't zoom out, I'll stay here, because I just want to put a orange bud on this, and I'm going to use a cast on stitch. You're probably thinking, where's her hoop? Remember I started this whole project and 99.9% .9 is done in the hoop. And I will continue to do that. But when I went to do the cast on stitches in the center of this flower, the hoop was just too much hard work. So I ended up coming out of the hoop. Let's be bold and have a decent stitch. So I just find it easier to do this stitch. Can you hear a little noise? I'll just stop talking for a moment. Can you hear it? If you can't, sorry, I'll keep talking. But if you can, Fudgy's snoring. He's in his hammock on the window in the sun and uh, he's having a snore. Oh, bless his little furry feet. There we go, cast on stitch. If that was too quick, I do apologize, but it's a stitch. You know what but means? Means I don't care about the first part of that sentence. And what did I say? If I was too quick, I do apologize, but very insincere. If, if you missed it, I'd highly recommend you go to, um, the search function on your YouTube and just type in cast on stitch, but it is a stitch, but that it is a stitch that I learned by watching Jennifer Colston when I did her class and she uses it a lot in her flowers. So I must say this morning when I started stitching, all of these little twiggy bits let me go back out a bit all these little little twiggy bits i'll start to get into the the jennifer groove so that's sort of how that came to be that's too big for a car a a border so i'm going to just squirrel that away for another day and pop that back in my Container. I have such a mess on my desk. I've had kids here stitching. I've had adults looking, touching, wanting to see what I'm doing. So stuff gets pulled out, not packed away. And you're thinking, gosh, this is an odd conversation because it's now the end of January and she's still celebrating New Year's after New Year's. It's a couple days after New Year's now, getting ready to pack up and go back to Brisbane for a couple of weeks. So I'm just trying to get this video done and then I can go back home and I guess pick up another project. So much going on, it's very exciting. So I think I've upended green beads onto that little tray. Where else can we pop some green beads? What about some little buds? Let's have a look, have a play. This is the pick it up again and see where you can stitch something. I'm going to see if I can stitch a green bead. Onto that. I think I can. What about we do them all in a row? I've got a little skin. 
sketched leaf there as if it didn't happen, but I put it back in, of course, after the fact. And if you do three little beads in a row, it's just about exploring, guys. If you're not sure what you're going to do, just have a go. If it is something you don't like, you can always take it out. Gosh, I hope you can hear him snoring. That's hilarious. He's had a big week. He absolutely detests the thought of strangers in his house. He detests the thought of children going, can we touch the cat? That's such as like sheer fear for a fudge. So I was like, no, no, pussy's not interested. He's an old boy. He doesn't like to be fussed. Oh, but I'm good with cats. No, no, no. Leave pussy alone. Put pussy down. He's about to spit fire at you. Poor fudge. There we go. So I do two on that next one. I've put it at an angle as if they are little. Oops. What happened then? I've gone back through the same hole and lost my beads. I tell you, maybe I shouldn't have done a video today. This is a calamity of comical errors. Let's try that again, guys. If I had some fabric underneath this, it would give me more structure to stitch into. Because at the end of the day, this is just linen. So it's got that looser weave. And if there was a felt or a cloth, now my needles come unthreaded. Goodness me. How long have I been filming? Is it time to release me from this class? Let me have a look. 37 minutes. Gee, hang in there, guys. There we go. So... This little orangey flower feels a bit hydrangea-ish. It's got the structure of a hydrangea. I sort of felt, I might do another knot. Just concentrate for a wee moment, girl. So all the guests have gone home. It's a couple days after New Year's for me. And I'm washing, 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 washing. Towels, beach towels, sheets. Hubby's offered to vacuum. Well, he doesn't know it yet, but he's about to be allocated vacuum duties. He's just having some quiet time at the moment. He's been busy yibby yabbing for like a week, which is a lot for him. He's not a yibby yabber. So he's having quiet time. So when he's finished his quiet time, he's gonna offer to vacuum. So yeah, clean up time now. Clean up time, a bit of rest before we head back to Brisbane. So I really wanna finish pansies for you guys so you're right for the month. And the other project that I'm really putting time into is Stitch the Season Summer. Um, Don't come up in the same spot, girl. Come up behind the beads because the linen is just too soft to hold your reversing thread. So I'm going to put I'm going to put three stitches through just to stabilize it. It's a little bit wonky for my liking. So yeah, I think. We've allowed two days, so if I can get the washing done today, which has started, the, the last guest left at nine o'clock. So I think it's one. So I've got a few loads done. I just don't have a clothesline, so I'm sort of taking most of the moisture out with the dryer and then I've got linen string strung up everywhere around the house all over couches and things gosh it looks like a campsite that's been hit with torrential rain you're trying to get all the tent um tent 
linen dry. That's what it looks like here. So I think I'll leave it at that. Don't want to go overboard. And then um, tomorrow I've got a afternoon tea to go to. My cousin up here, she has snagged herself a, a new man and she was telling me all about him at New Year's and she is a smitten kitten. That's um, Edie's mum. So he's now coming across for a few days to spend with their family, get to know everyone. How nerve wracking for them all. Well, not, you know, the new couple. So we've been invited over for some scones, some scones and to meet the new, the new man. So we will do that tomorrow afternoon. And then the next day we'll hop in the car and go back to Brisbane. So Fudgy has to pack up his bunk, his holiday bunk. And we're back to Bandit and Pepper. So I'm really looking forward to getting back home for a bit. I feel like I've been toing and froing for months. Well, I have. I've just dropped the needle. Goodness me. So, yeah, it will be good. It will be good. We need to start ordering stock. So, time to do inventory in our stores. So, the staff will be back as well from their little break. The stores will be closed for the season and we will start ordering stock. By the time you're watching this, end of January, I should have my overseas orders done and I'll be starting to visit all of the Aussie wholesalers that also import Christmas, having a look at their range and making some additional selections. Because um, we just can't import everything, we're too small. Some of the factories overseas just won't talk to us because we're little. They want the big, the big orders. But um, we're fortunate. We do have a few that will, who will, you know, take an order from us because we're only little. So it's a lot of fun. It's my chance to go Christmas shopping. So with these beads, I'm just following that random stitch line. It is completely random. It is not there to really instigate a, the imagery of a leaf in any way, botanically. It is just adding a little line of beads that tone in with the background, ow, and enhance the texture on that leaf. That's all I'm using beads for, is just adding that little bit of bling, and it doesn't have to make sense probably much to the frustration of all of you. <laughs> We're being loose, remember. We're trying to explore a more relaxed version of these prompts. So if you're not part of our Facebook group and you have Facebook, you're very welcome, come on over. There's a link in my description below. We just ask you two questions. What country are you from? Because that just is just so interesting to me. And also, uh, what's your favorite stitch? And you're more than welcome to say all of them because that's probably what I would say. Because how do you pick? I go through phases. I was a bit of a cast on cast on stitch fan there for a bit. I thought I was very clever when I mastered that one. Very clever. Okay, that knot is just not big enough. Let's have another go. I've got a few more beads floating around. Where else can we pop them? Let's go to this little leaf. Did I mention I put more ink around? Yeah, I did, I did. Another thing I did is down around here, I had shaded with the pencil and wet it. It had blended. Um, but there was still a few strokes of the pencil I could see, and it was bugging me. 
So before I ironed it, I went back with some water and really saturated that little spot so that those strokes of the pencil completely disappeared and much, much happier with it. Let's grab another bead. Some of these beads are really narrow holes. They're a bit of a, a mishmash of cheap beads, I think. But they're perfect for this type of work where we're just, you know, playing. So I might need to go and find Reginald. I've been avoiding him all new Christmas, New Year, because he's just got such a bad attitude and I really didn't want him in my life for the time. So I'm using one of his older brothers who are a lot more well-mannered, but unfortunately they don't go through these beads that are a little bit narrow. So Reg might have to come out. I think he's in Brisbane, actually. I don't think he was invited to Christmas. He's just been naughty all year. Like Santa wasn't coming to him. So I think I left him at home. Yeah, I guess if you're new to the channel and you're wondering what is she talking about, I'll let everyone comment down below who Reg is and what we think of him. So please feel free to express the experiences we've had with our Reginalds. The needle that we loathe but love all the newbies will be like, what have I stumbled onto? Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Okay, let's knot that off. All right, let's have another little look. I just want to have another overall look to see if there's anything I... Oh, I have to show you this too. Um, Ducky's been following me from couch to couch all Christmas, New Year. And, of course, my little gold scissors are with me. And they were in behind the couch. They were, like, slipping and sliding everywhere. So I remember someone actually mentioned, when this video went to air, you, a couple of you mentioned you should attach the scissors. So I ended up coming in here, finding a little bit of um, elastic that I happened to have with me and um, stitched it on, and it's brilliant. So Ducky's in charge of all sharp objects and he's done a good job especially with kids around at least I can say don't touch the duck and they did um what else was I going to tell you I think I think that was it I've told you about using your scrappy bits somewhere even if you just stitch a flower somewhere or go back in and put some French knots use your oughts for French knots or seed stitch gosh I haven't done any seed stitch yet what could I do with that yeah, that's another rabbit hole. Oh, this flower here. I think I got sidetracked. The designer is Lazy Daisy, which is what I did, but heaps of them. Then I come to this flower. I'm like, well, I'm not going to start doing the same thing on the same space. Plus there's another six of them. So I started the Lazy Daisy and then I broke out into um, bullion stitch, not bullion stitch, Pistil stitch, you know, the stitch with the knot on the end. So it gave a completely different effect to the centre of that flower. Then I started stitching in little white bits. I went back and dropped a little bit of blue um, watercolour on it. There was white gouache in there, if you recall, wrapping the stitch. That's what I should show you. How are we going for time? 10 minutes, all right, no problems. So, remember I was showing you before that I had stitched all this in stem and then I went back and just started overcast stitching or couching or wrapping it. I, technically, I don't know what it is, the right words, but I'll show you what I mean. It's not really couching. Couching to me is stitching over something and coming out the back of your fabric, coming back up and stitching it over again, you know, holding something down. That's couching. Wrapping a stitch, possibly. 
So I'm just finding a good one. All right. So we've got this stitch coming through here to that pale purple flower. So what I'm going to do is come up down the bottom here. Hopefully you can see, yes, I think you can. And wrapping through that previous stitched down stem. And what it does is it just makes that stem look a whole lot of interesting. Especially when you use a variegated thread or a different color. So I've got a variegated cotton here, crochet cotton, pearl cotton. So it is now giving a twisted vine look. Let me know what the official name this is, but it is really interesting for texture. So once again, if you think you're finished off pansies, ladies, go and grab it and go and stitch into it some more because you're probably not as loose as I'd like it to be. And I guess take that, it looks like a pansy, away from it a little bit. Add some more flowers. Drift around your pansy with other things. French knot seed stitch. Lazy Daisy. Go and play. We want this piece, if you're following my style, um, to be an eclectic imagery. I don't know how else to describe it. Free. See, I keep coming back to loose. It's not the traditional fancy work, but I'm doing it on traditional fancy work. Gosh, I love it, breaking all the rules. So there you go. I have now wrapped that stem and it's raised it up above all the rest. So I'm now starting to get a little bit of dimension. Gosh, if grandma saw the back of this tablecloth, she would have conniptions. It is a mess. I love it. <laughs> she would have had me sliding my thread through to disguise it constantly, knotting and starting. Definitely. So if you've outlined your pansy with a satin stitch or a split back stitch, why don't you consider going in and wrapping it with either the same or a different thread or coming around with a you know, a, a purple or a yellow or all those classic pansy colours. There we go. So that little, am I on camera? Please tell me I am. Yes, I am. Maybe I won't. Oh, you poor things. I'm sure you're busy stitching anyway. By going by your comments, you either are knitting, listening to me, stitching, listening to me, housework, Silly people listening to me, stop it immediately. So you will excuse when I'm slipping in and out of shot. I think Edie definitely adjusted my chair because I've now sunk even lower. <laughs> I'm actually sitting below nearly the desk. Oh my goodness. Oh, the one rule I gave myself is no green thread will go into this border. I just want it, the colours that we're working with. So what else can we wrap? I might do this guy over here, go into that maroon flower. And even some of these little flowers admittedly they're just here, I think they will pop up all over the place. If I've got a bit of an odd gap between a prompt, I'm just going to, you know, explore some of these little, uh-oh, yes, he's up. I've woken him. Hey, Fudge. 
goodness, he's going to jump up. Got beads everywhere. Oh no, he's just walked past. He's going to the door behind me where the sun comes in. He's sitting on the mat and looking out. I'm going to finish this little stem and then I might let you guys go. I've been rabbiting on for an hour, I'm sure, surely. Gosh, now it's uncluded. And then the next time you see this, it will be me revealing the February prompt. How exciting. Hope you like it. I have changed my thoughts because I did have one and I've changed my mind. I said to Susanna and Tia, no, no, I'm not doing that one. I've got another flower in my mind that I just have to stitch and get it out because I'm losing sleep. <laughs> See, Grandma would make me end off, but I'm going to sneak through there like a naughty girl. Hey, Fudge. And I'm going to come up here and just wrap that last, that last little bit. So going over to his bowl. He's had a drink of water when he hopped down. And now he's checking out his bowl. Morsels. All right, guys, that is it from me. I'm signing off. I am positive I will pick this piece up again. This won't be the end of it, but I will not be back for another video because it will be very close to being in February, if not definitely in February. I haven't looked at the calendar to see how it all falls, but some, some more ideas for you. Oh, I know what else I haven't done. I haven't stitched the little green leaves that hold that pansy bud I have there but not on the rest so I definitely want to do that too before I walk away from this prompt so there you go thank you everyone for joining me and I do hope you pick up your pieces and have another play have another stitch and even have a think about throwing a few of your warts I even had visions of doing some little flowers off of them too who knows? Who knows? All right, guys. Look after yourselves. Bye.